Today, folks, we got to discuss what could be a brand new stock market crash, or dare I say pandemic 2.0, and what you need to be doing to structure your investing style, your strategy, your portfolio leading into this uncertainty. We're going to talk about stocks that I thought would have been doing great. Clorox posted earnings. I got crushed. I just bought it last week. I should have waited. We're going to talk about Alibaba, maybe a little bit about the Robinhood IPO, and then, of course, take a general view of my portfolio. So in the clarity of my transparency, help me out. I'm not asking for a lot. Just hit that like button because like a band-aid, we're going to rip this off and we have to talk about pandemic 2.0. The U.S. right now is seeing daily case counts they haven't seen since mid of 2020. They're seeing hospitalizations of over 50,000 people that haven't been seen since February. And I'm not here to tell you that how do we get to herd immunity? Should we be getting more people vaccinated? What? That's not, that's not what I'm here to discuss. I'm just looking at the raw numbers and telling you what you need to be doing to invest, to make sure your portfolio will not get destroyed destroyed in this. And no, I'm not a financial advisor. This is going to be purely for entertainment purposes, but I scaled down my recovery play, primarily being Rio Can. I made a huge bet. I was up a lot. Thanks to this, I pulled back slightly, nothing too crazy, but if you are heavily leveraged in airlines, cruise lines, uh, anything to do with restaurants or resorts, now is the time to take profit, especially if you are up. Now is not the time to double dip your toes in thinking that things are going to get better from here because clearly they're only getting worse. Now we just opened up the Canadian borders to the U.S. and thanks to this, I'm going to make a bet right now. Give it a couple months. There'll be new stipulations. I can almost guarantee it. So for me personally, I would take that profit. If you have any extra money to invest, and I would be leaning more into companies that take advantage of this pandemic. That would be your tech companies. I mean, there's a lot of them are trading at discounts. Well, I wouldn't say discounts, but they're definitely trading down from the earnings releases they just had. Me personally, I've been buying into things that are on cord by medical stuff like Clorox, a consumer staple brands that would only be comparable to something like a Pepsi, in my opinion. And you know what's crazy? crazy to me, guys. They kind of missed EPS. I thought the revenue numbers were great, but it's trading down to levels it hasn't seen since 2020. This is bloody bleach, not bloody bleach, but it is bleach cleaning products. And they just signed so many contracts, NBA, MGM Resorts. Why are they trading down to the 2019 levels as though the pandemic never happened? You know what that screams to me? Discount. How much of a discount? Well, you tell me. I'm not going to get into some of the issues that they are having because, yeah, they missed EPS numbers. There's no doubt. I personally believe it's short-term pain for longer-term gain. But just taking a look, guys, no one is buying Clorox products like they were in the pandemic. That's the same to be true with toilet paper, things like Kimberly Clark. Things have rolled back a little bit, but the question is, have they built a new foundation? Do they have newer clients? Are they seeing more growth than they would have without the pandemic? So going back to 2019, they did $6.2 billion in revenue and a gross profit of $2.72 billion. Today, they are expected to do $7.5 billion in revenue and a gross profit of $3.4 billion. So they are increasing their gross profit by almost $800 million. Their top line has increased by over a billion, yet the company is back in time to when they were valued in 2019. And I, like I said, I'm not going to sit here and argue to you why you might want to pick up this dip. I personally am picking it up. I might buy a smidgen more here because their Q2 earnings still did more revenue than they did last quarter. So we're reaching a baseline. I don't think we're going to be seeing this downtrend anymore. And they're sitting at a great base. So I say value. What about Alibaba? Now, this is a company I believe is largely on court to some degree by Amazon. If Amazon doesn't meet expectations. Alibaba probably not going to meet expectations because a lot of people buy from Baba and they sell on Amazon. They're kind of like in this little co-environment that way. And just taking a look, guys, over the one year, Alibaba is trading down, what, a whopping 24%. Over the five year, guys, they're also hitting 2018, 2019 levels, which are completely unjustifiable in my means. I know a lot of people are getting caught up in the political rhetoric. This thing is getting slapped silly as kind of being one of the gems that sit at the top of the political rhetoric currently going on right now. But just keep in mind, guys, that Alibaba notched revenues to 205 billion yuan. That's 31.8 billion US. And they missed by the earnings expectations of 251 billion. That's a pretty big miss overall. But in the perspective of where they are from where they were, these numbers are insane. Same with Amazon. I mean, Amazon took an 8% hit after earnings and Alibaba can't even drop anymore because they hit levels that they, they, they don't deserve to be in my opinion, and so much so that Alibaba increased their share buybacks from 10 billion to 15 billion, and that's going to take up another two or three percent of the float. So if you buy it now, 
there's potential that at least the stock might go up two or three percent based off share buybacks. And then if anybody starts buying more shares, it should give you some more pressure to the upside. So I would say if you come back to me in three to five years and you're picking Alibaba or Clorox up today, something tells me you're going to say, hey, Kyle, I'm going to shake your hand. You suggested some good companies. Not investment advice by any means. Keep that keep that in the back of your head. Uh, let's talk about Robinhood. Maybe this is one we should have been buying, more speculative by nature, but trading up 33% now since IPO, becoming a darling of the Reddit form Wall Street bets. And yeah, guys, let's just take a look at some statistics because I find these really interesting. I personally like Vlad, the CEO. I like Robinhood. If this company was public during the whole reign of GME destroying them, because they froze the accounts and all that other stuff, I would have bought that dip. Uh, taking a look at the total revenue, guys, their growth has been stellar, like unbelievably stellar. In the pandemic of 2020, they raised $959 million in revenue. That was the growth rate they expanded from, from 2019. And something tells me 2021 is probably going to be pretty good too. Uh, but it's fun to look at these numbers compared to all the other companies that are obviously trading platforms. Their total users now sit at 18 million. Keep in mind that is completely encored by retail investors. Robinhood is not a place I would be putting millions of dollars into. And that's kind of expected considering we scroll down, guys, just take a look at the, uh, I want to show you this, Robinhood average account size versus competitors. So Robinhood's average account size is $35. Hundred dollars. TD Ameritrade's is one hundred and ten thousand, and Charles Schwab is two hundred and forty thousand, and that's kind of true. I would not invest six figures worth of money with Robinhood. That's just me personally. But from a standpoint of a retail investor, they have an incredible branding power, being the first company to introduce commission-free trading. Though now the big banks are kind of signing up to that as well. I just like I said, it's kind of speculative. I could give you a bear case and a bull case on this. You know, the fact that it's kind of bearish that a lot of their income was produced by Dogecoin at one point and a lot of things that are speculative by nature. But I like the company. I like the vibe of it. I like Vlad. It's just my humble and personal opinion. And I want to know what you think. Would you buy Robinhood at this valuation? I'm not going to buy it here, but I'm going to follow this story. And I'm very intrigued by the whole thing. But taking a look at the broader view of the markets here, folks, it's incredible to think that we are 0.1% away from all-time highs on the S&P 500. So congrats to people that just want to sleep passively at night and, you know, pick up the broader indexes. However, if, you know, things continue to go in the way they look like they're going with the pandemic, it's only going to push the S&P 500 higher. And why is that? Because the best companies that are taking advantage, your Apple, your Microsoft, your Facebook, your Google, your Amazon, your J's and J's, your healthcare companies, all these top weightings are going to continue to move higher because that's where every investor thinks the easy money is and it truly is and will continue to be in these current uh, circumstances and environments in a broad view of my portfolio which i showed you guys last week i'm very happy with where i sit because i'm well over 300k at this point i am stacking a lot more cash i recently just added another 1500 to the cash position which doesn't reflect in here, I ended up finalizing my MPW position. I wish I picked it up before earnings as well because it dropped right after I bought it because the earnings were okay. They were pretty good. Um, so my average buy price right now on MPW sits at around $21.13 a share. Uh, very happy with that, but I'm going to be more leaning into the sectors of my portfolio for the second half of this year that are boring. Is continued into utilities. I love my Algonquin power. I know People don't want to talk about them, but they don't care if there's a pandemic going on. They don't care if there's not a pandemic going on. They continue to be very nominal and have incredible compounded rates of dividend growth. And right now, you know, utilities make up about 14% of my overall portfolio. And if I were you, because this is for me personally, and you're brand new to investing, I would heavily be leaning into tech. I've spent a lot of time in these last couple months reassuring my portfolio to take advantage of tech, which now makes up 28% of the portfolio overall. I'm not buying any more at this very moment. I'm just going to be a patiently awaiting while I continue to add to some of these other positions. But I bought enough stocks to keep me happy for the year. I'm more concerned about making sure my cash and I'm more secure in other sectors of my portfolio with things not to cause a debate, but with things like Bitcoin, because, you know, if the economy runs into issues, at least with gold and Bitcoin, you can be segregated from a lot of that. And that's something my portfolio has been lacking is just something disconnected from these assets. Putting that all aside, this is where my portfolio generally sits. Very pleased. And I want to know where your portfolio sits. What are you buying into? How are you setting your portfolio up for potentially a 2.0 pandemic? Unfortunately, it is just the time we sit in. And if you have recovery plays, airlines, cruise lines, um, <clears throat> you know, restaurants, resorts, I want to know what you're doing with them. I'd love to hear about it. So in light of all of this, stay cool, stay awesome, and I look forward to catching you tomorrow.